Okay, thanks for waiting, everyone. Um, and uh, welcome to the, uh, the fourth Experience Japan exhibition. It's great to see so many people here, so many people excited about um, opportunities in, in, in Japan for um, study and work. Um, I've lived in Japan now for about a year. Um, I live in Japan, I work in Japan, I've got a, a job in Japan, I've traveled all, all around Japan, so I know what a, what a, a fantastic, exciting place it is to um, live and work in, and I'm sure it, it's a fantastic place to study in as well, which you'll hear from our speakers on um, quite soon. So this exhibition is um, organized by Keio University in uh, collaboration with the British Council. So um, it's great for them, it's great to have them organise this, this, this event for us. The f format of the event is down um, in this room, um, there are a series of seminars, but upstairs uh, we have uh, representatives from about uh, 20 universities and some other organisations, some foundations and um, some, some employers who I know would, would, would love to speak to you. So I really encourage people to go um, and speak, uh, go, go and talk to those people when they're not um, in these seminars. Um, this session is about studying in Japan, and uh, we've got a um, fantastic speaker, um, Helen Kenyon, who's going to talk um, to you about studying in Japan. So, welcome, Helen. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Can everyone hear me okay? Can you all hear me at the back? Um, yeah, as Martin just said, my name's Helen. Um, I spent around seven years living and working and studying in Japan. So I'm really excited to give a presentation like this and to see uh, that there's already so many people uh, who've come to, to hear about studying in Japan. I uh, started to learn uh, Japanese uh, after I left high school. I made uh, what I like to think is the rather ambitious decision to take a four-year degree in Japanese studies uh, from complete beginner level. Um, but I made it through those uh, four years of Japanese studies, which I, I did at uh, Cambridge University here in the UK. Um, and during that time, I spent a couple of periods uh, in Japan, uh, one uh, in Osaka, and also I did a one-year internship in Kyoto. And uh, after I graduated, I, um, I went on the Japan Exchange and Teaching Program, the JET Program, and uh, I uh, lived in uh, Aomori Prefecture, which is at the, um, just underneath uh, Hokkaido, on the uh, main island of Japan. Um, and then I spent around four years in Tokyo, um, and about half of that I spent working for Keio University, who are one of the co-hosts of this event. So, um, um, phew. <laughs> so, so just gonna catch some breath, I'm a little bit nervous. I, I was facing this way, so I had no idea how many people I was gonna be speaking to. Um, so what I'm gonna try and do in 20 minutes is give a really um, general overview of just some things that you want, might want to think about when you're deciding, um, do I want to study in Japan? What do I want to study? Where do I want to study? Um, so I'll just uh, give some ideas of what kind of courses there are, um, and then do, uh, go through some general information, uh, like what, what is it like to study in Japan? What kind of social life is there? And um, some tips about uh, academic fees and that kind of thing. So um, if you're really new to the idea of studying in Japan and you'd like to get a, an, just an idea of Japanese language, Japanese culture, um, there are some really good programs that you can take as short-term programs, which are short-term programs in Japanese studies. Um, they're normally about two to six weeks long and they'll cover a whole range of topics in Japanese culture um, some of them are more specific uh, subject-based, so Japanese law or um, contemporary Japanese culture, but men most of them give a broad overview. Um, and they're also very uh, good programs because they incorporate a lot of um, opportunities to get hands-on experience of what you're studying. So um, 
for example, if you study something like Japanese art, you'll go to a Japanese art museum and see the works. Or if you study Japanese management, you'll go to a Japanese company and see what's actually going on, um, maybe in a factory or an office. Um, and uh, the university's also tried to make sure that there's lots of student, uh, Japanese student involvement in the programs. So you'll also get to spend time with Japanese students and get some, um, find out some uh, hands-on what it's really like to study in Japan. Phew. <laughs> it's really cool. Um, so, uh, as I said, the programs are about two to six weeks long, and they are run, uh, some are run in around uh, springtime, um, but there's a lot of programs that you can do in uh, the summer. So if you're already a, a university student in the UK, you can actually fit that into your university summer holiday. So it's a great way to kind of get an idea if perhaps you want to go back to Japan for a longer period of time. I spoke to a couple of the students on the KO short-term program, and they said they used the program in that kind of way just to get a feeler for whether it was something they were really interested in doing long-term. And yet they were really into the idea of coming back and doing maybe a long-term uh, one-year or two-year program. Um, so that's um, something that you can ask um, the university representatives here today, because a lot of the universities who have booths today uh, run this kind of program, so um, you can uh, ask them for more specific information if you're interested in that kind of thing. If you are thinking about maybe studying for a degree in Japan, um, Jap in Japan, uh, it's a little bit different to the UK. Uh, whereas a lot of UK undergraduate degrees are for three years in Japan, um, generally all undergraduate degrees will take four years. Um, and then uh, it's the same kind of system. They have the bachelor degree, master's degree, and PhD. A uh, master's degree is about two years, and then a PhD will take another three years. Um, a, a big difference with the UK system is that the academic year begins in um, April in Japan and runs through to March. So that's just something that you might want to keep in mind if you're thinking about going straight out of school into university in Japan or straight on to a postgraduate degree because you want to think about the timings. But at the same time, actually a lot of Japanese universities are trying to take, because um, they're so keen to take a lot of international students there's a lot of programs that do actually take students in autumn as well. So just uh, look for all the options available. Um, if you, your Japanese is near fluent level, you obviously you have, um, you're, you're able to study a degree, an undergraduate or postgraduate degree completely in Japanese. But there are a lot of opportunities available if you want to take a course, if you have absolutely no um, Japanese ability, uh, there are courses that you can take that are taught completely in English. Um, these are spread across all the um, a range of disciplines uh, in the uh, humanities um, and the sciences, for example. There's a lot of programs uh, you can take in um, economics, uh, global policy, uh, science and technology, and some sort of more modern uh, emerging subjects like media design. Um, so again, that's something that you can talk to the university representatives today about what kind of programs they have, because I know that uh, all of the universities that have booths here today have these programs taught in English. So I'm going to try and catch my breath. Um, so another thing that you probably want to think about when you're choosing if you want to study in Japan and, and what you want to study is how the programs are taught. Um, because it's also a good thing to note that in Japan, um, unlike the UK where um, a lot of the degrees are very specialized, in Japan, um, because of the influence of the American education system there, 
Um, a, the, a lot of universities have uh, general education requirements. So that means that um, you, in your first two years, you take a lot of options outside of your specialist field just to give you a, a broad introduction to um, academic study and research. So, um, for example, if you were going to take a degree in engineering, you would, um, you would take some core options in engineering, but also um, something quite unrelated, like philosophy or history, and that's a um, compulsory requirement in Japan. So um, that's some, also something to bear in mind when you're deciding to look at what, how, the, what, how the program is um, made up. Um, in terms of uh, how uh, the courses are taught in Japan, it's really similar to the UK. So there's lots of large scale uh, lecture classes, but also um, small group kind of things like a tutorial. Uh, particularly when you whoops, go on to your uh, last two years of your course, a lot of students, they'll join a seminar group, which um, in Japan they call a zemi. Um, that's about 10 to 15 students in a group. Um, and they'll have one professor in charge of the group getting the students to do um, intensive research together. So it's a really great chance to kind of um, debate, do dis discussions and debates. Um, so again, that's something to look out for, um, whether your course has those kind of elements. Um, the course is, uh, in Japan, the way that you actually graduate and get your degree is by earning credits, which I guess a lot of um, UK universities now have the same system, but that's the general uh, rule for all Japanese universities. You get credits by um, successfully completing exams and coursework and attending lectures. Um, a lot of students in Japan, um, Japanese students, try to get their credits um, in the first few years of their degree um, so that they can have a bit more time in the final year because um, I don't know if you know about the culture in Japan for um, job hunting. There's a lot of, um, yeah, a lot of university uh, students come straight out of university and go into jobs. So they'll graduate in March and join a company in April. And uh, running up to that, there's about a year of um, interviews and applications, <coughs> which takes a lot of time. So a lot of students try to make sure that they can free up some time in their final year to do that. So hopefully I can go on to a bit more um, onto the social side now. Um, obviously, thinking about where you're going to live is a pretty big element. Um, in Japan, uh, just like the UK, there's plenty of um, dormitory uh, student accommodation that's run by each university. Um, there's uh, accommodation that's run by the university itself and also private accommodation. Um, that will be fully furnished um, and fairly, fairly affordable for students. Um, that's generally, uh, there's enough accommodation available for all international students and at least for one year of their course. Um, and that's, that's generally a really great atmosphere in the dormitories. Um, even if the dormitory is all for international students, there's normally one or two Japanese students living in the dormitory with you so they can help you out getting um, settled in in Japan, maybe take you to the town hall and go through the registration process, that kind of thing. So um, it's really good to enter, to live in a dormitory um, so you can get a good, um, it's, you can uh, get settled into Japan. But you, can, you do also have the option, if you want to, to rent a private flat but that's a little bit more complex, and um, it's definitely important to um, go through the university's service, what they have to offer, because um, the university can introduce you, um, can help you find the apartment and explain the, all the things you have to do. For example, you need to, um, in Japan, when you run, rent an apartment, you need to have somebody as a guarantor um, to sign the contract with you and normally the university can do that for you but obviously you need to 
to make sure you've got that arranged and also think about the kind of initial costs. In Japan, there's some um, interesting initial costs when you first rent an apartment. You have to pay something called key money, which is basically a present to your landlord. You never get that back. So um, you just have to think of those kind of uh, expenses. Um, and the university can also give, give you an idea of some other <coughs> options. For example, um, I lived in a couple of share houses, which I think is quite a new trend in Japan. Um, but it's a really a uh, great way to get to know Japanese people and to have a kind of support, uh, support base and also um, uh, just a really nice um, environment to live in. Um, just watch out, there are a few share houses which are completely for foreigners, but if you can find somewhere that's kind of half Japanese, half uh, international students or inter people coming to work in Japan, um, they tend to have a really nice, uh, a nice uh, also social in programs and the Japanese people who live there are generally really supportive. Um, another thing I rec really recommend you to think about is a homestay. Um, even if you just think about that for a, little, a short term, to get used to uh, living in Japan at first, a homestay is a, just a really great way to get used to um, sort of everyday life in Japan. And um, I found my homestay I first did in Osaka, and I don't know if you know anything about uh, Osaka people are said to be very, very straightforward. So I had a really great host mother who just she told me exactly what she thought of my Japanese, <laughs> which was awful, um, and managed to, ah, thank you, um, managed to get me, sorry, get me um, uh, a little bit more motivated to improving my Japanese. Um, so yeah, homestay is another great thing to think about um, for living in Japan. And then once you're settled in, you want to think about kind of social, the social side of things. Um, in Japan, a lot of students um, invest a lot of time in uh, club activities. Um, so the, uh, a lot of universities have literally hundreds of clubs um, in all kinds of, um, you might want to try some kind of traditional um, Japanese singing or dancing, or there's actually a really great sporting culture in Japan. Um, I gave uh, martial arts, I gave kendo a go, which I regretted, <laughs> certainly got a lot of um, muscle ache for that. Um, kudo as well, Japanese archery was really good fun. And, um, and I trained a bit with, uh, I, when I did an internship with um, a university called Itsumeikan in Kyoto, I um, trained with the rowing team, and that was really great because they, um, they're they very serious about the sport, but they also um, they go overnight the night before training and have a really great social um, just time just hanging out and then get into the sport the next day. So the club activities can be a really major part of your social life in Japan. So another thing, just another thing to think about when you're deciding what you might uh, ooh, want to do in Japan. Wow, I'm really running out of time. Um, sorry, I'm going to have to fly through um, the money aspect. I did just want to say quickly that a lot of Japanese students actually uh, also do part-time jobs, um, and that's also something that you can do as an international student, as long as you have the permission. I think there's a 28-hour limit or, um, to how m uh, per week to how much you can work. So tuition fees, um, there's three types of university in Japan. Um, about 80% of Japanese universities are actually private universities. Um, and the other two types, national and public universities, are uh, essentially non-private universities. So national universities are run by the national government, and uh, public universities are run by the local government. Um, so you see there's a about £2,000 difference in the fees, but generally it's an average of about £5,000 or less. So I won't go through the comparison. You can see that there, the comparison with UK fees, I think that kind of speaks for itself. Um, uh, and just 
quickly to say that tuition fees are the same in Japan for international students and for Japanese students. Uh, living costs uh, are about 500. This is just a, a national survey of all students in Japan. They said they're generally about 500 pounds a month. Um, that's for everything apart from your tuition fees. Um, and the map here at the top just shows that there is a kind of slight difference, actually fairly significant, sorry, 200, about 200 pound difference between to somewhere like Tokyo, and uh, which is in Kanto, and uh, Tohoku. So again, something to bear in mind um, when you're thinking about sort of costs and stuff. Um, and just to quickly say that you may have the impression that Japan is a very expensive place to live, um, but budgeting-wise, for example, something like food, you can actually live on a fairly reasonable budget. And there's very good food available at student canteens, um, cooking for yourself, that kind of thing. So actually, it's possible to live on this kind of budget as a student in Japan. Um, and scholarships and funding, um, there's. Uh, a lot of opportunities available for scholarships, so that's a really important thing to keep in mind when you're planning your studies. Um, I've run out of time. <laughs> um, government, uh, the Japanese uh, Ministry of Education, which is uh, MEX for short, has some great programs for undergraduates and postgraduates. Um, they, they have a booth here today, so you can ask them for information. Um, uh, there's also the universities have really comprehensive programs which will include uh, travel costs and a, a living stipend. So again, um, that's something you can uh, ask each of the universities today. And also the Japanese embassy, the Daiwa Foundation, the Japan Foundation um, will uh, offer private scholarships so, or can give information on private scholarships and they also have booths here today. Um, unfortunately, I'm going to have to whiz through my <laughs> final blurb. Um, I just wanted to quickly say that when I was living in Japan for seven years, I saw a lot of places, I, um, and not just the places I lived, but um, in, in Osaka, I met amazing people, and it's an amazing, lively city. In Kyoto, you have the traditional culture, the history, um, in Aomori, it's there's beautiful nature. I spend every evening skiing in in fantastic powder snow in winter, and the people are really warm. You get to learn a new language because the Japanese is completely different. Um, and uh, in Tokyo, it's Tokyo is again a completely different story. Amazing, the huge city, um, and so much to do. Um, so I just wanted to say finally that because there are so many different options available in Japan, it's a really good idea just to, um, to keep, uh, stay open-minded. And when you're making your final decision about where you want to go, just find out a little bit about the culture of the area um, before you make your decision. And I really hope that um, I've been able to give you some hints and that uh, you, uh, your planning goes well and you have a great time in Japan. Thank you. <laughs>